الو الو السلام عليكم دكتورة فاتن السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله تفضلي وير ريدي تو ستارت السلام عليكم ايفري ون حياكم الله جميعا ان ذا فيرست اساسن ويبينار اور جيست توداي از دكتورة فاتن الزبن استشارية uh, الطب النفسي واستاذ مشارك في قسم الطب النفسي في جامعه الملك عبد العزيز دكتوره فاتن از اي كنديان بورد سيرتيفايد ان سايكايتري وتخصص دقيق في اضطرابات المزاج والامراض القلق ويل بي توكينج توداي اباوت هاو تو ستي منتلي هيلثي ان ذا كوفيد 19 اوت بريك اند ذا كرنت سيتويشن وي ار ان ناو The mic will be with Dr. Fatima Zabin. Tafadil Dr. Fatima. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salam wa salam ala Rasulillah. Awal shi abba ashkurukum li itahat al-fursa liya to provide the tawiyah hadi li healthcare workers. Maalish min fadlik al-video ma hu mawjud. Yani ana mani shayfa al-video. Bas I think bas al-mic huwa al- اللي شغال دكتورة. الفيديو الآن دكتورة فاتن تفضلي نور بيكس الفيديو نو. طيب أوكي. طيب. I think most of the the people over here are uh, emergency staff, isn't it? Mostly emergency staff, emergency physicians, and uh, healthcare workers um, that provide the help for patients with corona virus. COVID-19, isn't it? I wish the moderator, Dr. Afnan, yes. لو, uh, correct. Uh, Dr. Uh, okay. uh, most of the uh, attendees here are emergency background, but there are a lot who are not emergency background. So we have um, okay. a multi-speciality uh, uh, participants in this webinar. Excellent. Okay. So since most of the people over here are frontline providers uh, of health care, and uh, so uh, you are, I can imagine, you are facing a lot of stress. Um, probably you are also asked to perform at a high standard and uh, be content despite this pandemic where uh, you are faced with a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty and you are faced with a lot of uh, um, probably uh, continuously changing uh, uh, rules, I guess. Um, let's first talk about what, what's, what's going on. I'm sure a lot of you also have um, different feelings and thoughts and struggling. Some of you are, might be also struggling with their feelings. Some of you might be feeling more tense, uh, more anxious. Some of you might have actually anxiety symptoms. And there is a lot of fear that has been voiced to me from uh, many healthcare providers. So I'm just imagining, since you are the first uh, line uh, or front line providers where I'm sure you probably are triaging different patients. Some of them have the virus and some of them don't. Uh, so you probably need to uh, you know, be just alert and treat every patient that, you know, take all your protective <clears throat> precautions. Um, and uh, I'm sure this causes a lot of stress to you. So, so how can we uh, manage those feelings? It is important to know that it is quite normal to have those feelings and those negative feelings during this critical and exceptional time in the pandemic. This creates a lot of stress and anxiety to um, the healthcare workers and healthcare providers. And the reasons behind this uh, stress or the reasons behind this uh, those uh, difficult feelings and those negative feelings are many, uh, many, there are many reasons for that. So first of all, if we can just summarize the reasons for you 
having those negative feelings, probably uh, one of the main ones is uh, you have to uh, probably be uh, um, having personal safety equipment that is new to you and it's not the usual gear that you wear so having to wear this new protective gear and protective equipment might be stressful to uh, a lot uh, especially that they have to wear an, uh, a mask a specific mask where it they can apply it can apply pressure on the face and um, those uh, protective gears need to be worn uh, in a specific manner like there's a sequence for you to put them on and take them off and what i've been hearing from a lot of healthcare workers that this might cause a heat and maybe um, uh, tiredness and uh, dehydration in uh, during uh, their practice uh, also i hear like after a certain time while people are wearing the n95 uh, they have also their breathing is uh, is difficult also so this causes stress in addition to that the uh, healthcare worker uh, needs to be vigilant and aware of the continuously and regularly changing regulations and rules in the healthcare institute so on a daily basis there might be new rules new regulations and uh, uh, new information that is is coming because this is something new it's uh, not known to the uh, medical practice and uh, you know having to be vigilant and aware of this new information and regulations would uh, keep or make anyone feel stressed out and one of the other uh, one of the main reasons wh why healthcare practitioners and healthcare workers um, have uh, told me that uh, this causes them, them a lot of stress is the fear of being infected with the virus while they are uh, doing their job. And either it is fear of being infected themselves or fear of transmitting the uh, virus to their loved ones, such as family members, parents, children, after they return home. Um, a lot of the healthcare workers also are foreigners and just, you know, thinking about their families abroad and thinking about their children abroad might also cause a lot of stress for them. Um, in addition to that, there are many social situations that are uh, different from the usual. Uh, for example, what I understood and tell me if I'm wrong, um, some healthcare practitioners decided to live in a different house than their family in, because they were worried, so worried about uh, transmitting the infection to their loved ones. So this has created stress because when they go home, instead of uh, finding a family, instead of finding like a family environment, a warm environment, they are alone on their own, which creates and adds to the stress. Some of the healthcare workers, unfortunately, have you know, had uh, uh, negative thoughts to the point that they were uh, you know, leaving their will to their uh, partners and you know, uh, asking them or telling them about their, the passwords of you know, certain uh, things and giving them information in case something happens to them. Also, um, you know, having to uh, worry about modes of transmission and the need, some of them, you know, ask to have even showers at the healthcare facility so that they um, do not transmit the infection to their family. Uh, this has, Salam alaikum. Is the video on now? Not sure. It's on and perfect. Go on. Shukran. Okay. Okay, so this has uh, created also a lot of stress. And uh, even when um, healthcare workers go home, there's a new uh, requirement or not a requirement, I would say. A lot of them are very um, stressed out that they would remove all their clothes, even like at the doorstep and 
um, would uh, you know take everything and uh, put it in the laundry basket. So I've been having some uh, participants here raise their hands. What, what am I supposed to do, Dr. Afnan? Yes, go on, and I, I will get you the questions from the participants. Okay, so they are, they want to ask questions. So. Um, the need to leave a distance between you and other uh, members of the family or other healthcare workers and the need of you to remind yourself constantly of this fact and this requirement keeps you stressed out and um, you know this will add to the stress. In addition to that there's a stigma for healthcare workers. I'm not sure if you have faced it yourself but there is a stigma from the society. Is, mm -hmm. is there is a stigma from the society where there is fear. Whenever they, uh, you know, the the society knows that you are a healthcare workers and you're a frontline provider, some of the uh, members, society members, might fear dealing with you, and this adds to the stigma. Some of the healthcare workers might worry to uh, voice their feelings and their fears. They might also worry to give their opinion about something since uh, they are asked to perform at a high standard and be content and uh, show up as the strong one. However, they are human beings. All of us are human beings and we have different emotions and feelings towards this pandemic. So how can we deal with those difficult emotions? First of all, let me uh, explain here what emotions might someone be uh, facing. So some might be having uh, fear, stress, anxiety, some more like advanced, um, you know, uh, feelings or symptoms might be uh, depressive symptoms like feeling sad, and um, wanting to isolate yourself, uh, uh, losing interest in things. And some, on, some of them might also have this um, secondary traumatic event while uh, you might face a uh, trauma of uh, someone's loved one. Some of the healthcare practitioners might also uh, go into uh, burnout. So how do we face this? The first thing uh, and the first weapon we have is the education. So when you educate yourself properly about this disease and um, you uh, uh, do the uh, personal protective um, uh, safety measures and uh, use the equipment that are required for you to stay safe, uh, this is like the uh, uh, this is the most important part of staying safe, um, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, underwent training regarding PPEs. In addition to that, what about our emotions and feelings? What about our fears? What about our you know stress level? What can I do with this? I'm sure a lot of you are asking you know what, I have those feelings, I worry a lot, and I'm not sure what to do. So if you tell yourself, okay, uh, I want to get rid of those negative feelings, uh, this is not uh, realistic. During this exceptional times, it is, you have to know that it is normal to feel like that. It is normal to feel stressed out, to feel uh, fearful, uh, a little bit maybe anxious. And you need to accept that it is okay to have those feelings because not accepting your feelings will make things actually worse. Wanting to get rid of those feelings will escalate those feelings and make you feel um, more and more anxious. So uh, what, what shall I do? So the most important part is not wanting to get rid of those feelings. It's accepting those feelings and knowing how to deal with them and moderate those feelings. And um, uh, we also need to understand them and uh, probably be vigilant of, of them and aware of them. So in general, the stress is either uh, external, like 
healthcare disasters like pandemics, disasters, and um, um, for example, traffic accidents. So those are external stressors. It can be, or it can, it can also be internal stressors. Internal stressors means that it, it's, first of all, internal stress, stressors varies from one to one. It varies from uh, one practitioner to, to, uh, than the other. It, if, uh, the internal stressors depends on the way a person thinks and the way the person um, um, uh, uh, manages his or her own feelings. In addition to that, there are some behaviors that will either make those um, internal stressors either worse or uh, lessen them. So scientists have found that the way we think and the way we behave could either increase the stress level or decrease the stress level. So again, I would uh, emphasize the fact that uh, instead of you wanting to get rid of those negative feelings, you will need to tell yourself that it is normal to have negative feelings, accept them, and do not want to get rid of them. Instead, you, you will need to know how to handle the, those feelings, how to moderate them, how to uh, manage them. Because it will be very hard for you to get rid of those feelings. It is part of the human nature. يعني بالعربي إنه المشاعر هي جزء لا يتجزأ من الإنسان وبسبب ذلك لا نستطيع أننا نتخلص منها فيجب أن نعرف كيف نديرها وكيف نعالجها طيب so what can we do First of all, being aware of your feelings. So for example, if you are stressed out, you have to ask yourself, what are the feelings I, might, I am going through? Is it more fear? Is it anxiety? Am I more irritable? Am I anxious? Am I uh, distressed? So being aware of your feelings and being aware of your thoughts. So before each feeling, there are thoughts that come before the feeling so ask yourself what was yes yes i'm sorry for cutting you الان في واحد من التعليقات من احد من الجمهور يقول اصبحت عصبيا وانفعل كثير الاسابيع اللي فاتت كيف ممكن احسن احسن العصبيه هذه ممتاز هذه ليست طبيعتي وانا انسان هادئ بالعاده فايش رايك إذا دكتور أولا المشاعر اللي أنت بتعدي فيها لازم تعرف إنه حضرتك بتعدي بمشاعر طبيعية يعني سواء عصبية سواء خوف سواء توتر تقول لنفسك أنا من الطبيعي إني أنا أشعر بدا الشعور في الوقت الغير طبيعي إحنا في وقت غير عادي ما هو ما بنمارس حياتنا الطبيعية it is an exception فمن الطبيعي أنا أشعر كده وأنا بتقبل إحساسي ده ولكن أنا لازم أعرف كيف أديره أو كيف أتعامل مع هذه هذه المشاعر ما المفروض تقول لنفسك أنا أبغى أتخلص من ده الإحساس ما رح تقدر تتخلص منه الإحساس ده جزء لا يتجزأ منك كإنسان أنت عندك مشاعر الله خلقنا بمشاعر ما خلقنا نمشي كده ما ما عندنا مشاعر المشاعر سواء كانت إيجابية أو سلبية بتأدي غرض معين حتى الخوف بيأدي غرض معين ففي هذا الوقت يصعب انك انت تتخلص منها ومو مطلوب منك تتخلص منها المطلوب تعرف كيف تديرها والان حنتكلم وحنقول كيف انا اديرها so, قبل اي شعور في فكره فلازم لازم انا انتبه لدي الفكره اقول انا طب قبل ما اسير العصبي ال- ال- الوقت ده ايش كنت افكر هل كان مثلا بتفكر انا ممكن يحصل لي كذا او انا آه خايف انه اعدي ولدي ولا يعني حاول انك تنتبه للفكره اللي بتجي وبعد ما تنتبه وتلاحظ الفكره اللي بتجي لازم اننا نحط الفكره في حجمها الطبيعي so you need to put those thoughts in its and give it its normal um, normal level it shouldn't be um, catastrophized or um, exaggerated so uh, الانسان اوكي okay. 
all of us, we have feelings and we have negative feelings because we start thinking that something bad will happen to us. So al-asabiyya di, or the worry and anxiety. Um, I'm, I'm talking in English because there are some uh, foreigners in the uh, participants and I'm sure they are, they, you know, they might uh, want me to talk in uh, English. So hadi uh, al-asabiyya and um, uh, when, we, when you think about this irritability, it's probably because you were thinking something bad might happen to, to me. So if this is the thought, something bad might happen to me, I might get infected or I might transmit, transmit the infection to my loved ones. Ask yourself, what is the evidence of this thought? Is it true? Okay you will find that the evidence of this thought is very small. Given that 80% of the patients who actually get the virus or get infected with the virus, actually 80% of them, they recover completely, okay, and have like a regular flu. And 15% of them need higher care and probably need to go in hospital. And only 5%, okay, and only 5% need uh, higher care and they might need to, to go to ICU. Then when I tell myself then what I'm thinking and what is repeating in my head is actually not the truth. And it is not, and I should not be believing those uh, thoughts, then the anxiety will go uh, down. So I'm having uh, some, um, chat uh, questions. Are you getting them, Dr. Afnan? Are you collecting the questions, Dr. Afnan? Yes, yes. We're collecting the questions until you end your talk and then we'll ask okay. them later. So most importantly is that I should not believe those thoughts, okay, and I, and I keep on um, criticizing those thoughts and putting them in the right level and not interact with, the, with those thoughts. So if you ask yourself, is this really going to happen? You will find that most likely the answer is no. This is not the truth. This is just a thought and this is not the truth. Then, okay. Is there evidence for what I'm thinking? You will find that most likely there is no evidence and it is being um, catastrophized and exaggerated in your mind. In addition to that, we have mentioned other than thoughts, there are some behavior that either would make things worse or would make things better. For example, the negative behaviors that can make things worse, that can make you feel more distressed and more anxious and maybe somehow depressed. If you, um, for example, become isolated, when you go home, you become isolated, you isolate yourself from talking to anyone and not interacting, this will make things worse. If you are sleeping and then uh, next day you stay in bed for a long time, this will make things worse. If you um, use unhealthy food habits, for example, if you have a big meal full of carbohydrates, oil, and uh, um, fatty meals, it will make you feel down and tired. Versus when you have a meal full of vegetables and fruits and proteins, this will make you actually have more energy and you will feel better. Uh, so the behaviors that are helpful during this time and this is please this is not a cliche this is not something we just repeat and it's like you know you're hearing this and yeah i know this most of you know this but we want you to implement this during this very important time first of all uh, keeping your social um, friends or your social circle active meaning that you keep your social life active on social media, although there's, there is a social distancing and you know, the have, having, uh, you, you need to stay home. However, you can have the, um, or make use of the digital media and talk to your loved ones through video calls. Uh, this will reduce your stress 
uh, to a very high degree. Uh, also, over and over, 20 minutes of exercise per day have proven that it reduces the stress significantly and increase the uh, improve the mood and decreases the feelings of stress and anxiety. Eating healthy, so a meal full of protein and vegetables will reduce your feelings of tiredness and fatigue. There, uh, there are some things uh, also that reduces the stress, things that are done by your hand. Some of them, whatever you enjoy, for example, some of my friends went into uh, sewing and doing crochet. Some men started doing things around the house with their hand, like uh, maybe fixing things or uh, reading. Sometimes also, you know, uh, uh, doing positive things like reading, journaling, writing your feelings, writing uh, your thoughts on a paper would really help you relax. And uh, it's like you are having all those thoughts on paper so you don't have to worry and um, uh, repeat it over of and over in your head. So, you know, you tell yourself, um, I am worrying, I have lots of thoughts, I'm gonna put it on paper, it is there on paper, and this has significantly helped a lot of people. So put it on paper, okay, and then your mind will be worry less. Um, there are other behaviors like Watching the news for 24 hours, 24 hours a day. Um, what are the senses? How many deaths are in the, for example, states in Europe? There's no need for that. Yes, don't be ignorant. Look at the news five, 10 minutes a day. You need to be aware of what's happening around you. However, you should not be, you know, looking for uh, information that are not helpful. There are information that makes you more stressed out and anxious. So just use the information to what really uh, helps you uh, in your job, but not to the point where, you know, what will increase your worries. In addition to that, the environment we work on affects our mood. So as much as you can, uh, let that environment be positive. I want you to discuss that with among your peers this and uh, voice out your feelings, voice out your thoughts, your thoughts, your worries. Uh, this can reduce this, the stress when you feel you are not alone on that boat. You, there is somebody that you can relate to, somebody that is going through the same experience will make the anxiety go down. Uh, so, there are things that are in you can be in control of and there are things that you are not in control of so please be busy with the things that you that is under your control and uh, helpful things live day by day don't think a lot about tomorrow so be present in the day rather than thinking about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow you know this uncertainty is distressing to all of us but if you tell yourself i can control what happens today i will wear my equipment protective equipment i will do those behaviors that are helpful to me i will not look at the news 24 hours uh, so this way you will reduce your stress um, rather than doing the behaviors that have actually shown that it will increase the level of stress and increase the worry Meditation and deep breathing. Again, on and on, we, we say that, and I don't want you to say, oh, I heard that a lot. No, do it, practice it. There are some YouTube videos where you can focus on your breathing. This will help you be present on the here and now, rather than, you know, you leave yourself and surrender to extra thinking and worries. And uh, it's like, you know, leaving yourself. You have to be in control of your thinking. And if you control your thoughts, you can control your emotions. Marsu hiwayatakum. I'm sure there is a lot of you that have hobbies and they haven't been able to do them. Do that at this point. This will make your feelings go down. Um, 
again, accept your feelings and do not uh, want to uh, uh, get rid of them. So some of you might have anger. So and and uh, this is a question that I just had. Some of you might have Dr. anger. Fatten, I have a couple of questions. Um, yes. The like most of the questions are talking about family. Alan and the like there's a couple of questions that have been asked. Uh, okay. One of the participants is saying that my mm -hmm. family is scared of me and they're frustrated mm -hmm. because uh, I work with patients and they're, they're afraid that I have a risk of getting exposed. So mm -hmm. they're either giving me the choice to stay at a hospital accommodation or take a leave away from work. Uh, they don't mm -hmm. want me to go to the hospital and come back home every day after being exposed to patients. And on the other hand, there's some people that their families are against them staying in hotels and against them uh, being outside of the house and they want them to come back home every day after they see the patients. So um, how do we deal with these situations that the frustration about the family, uh, mm -hmm. the fearness of getting the family into risk of, uh, of getting infected, um, families that are supportive, families that are against uh, them going yes. to their work, and uh, yes. their daily yes. duties. So what do you think of this issue? So it, it can be actually quite distressing, especially if the family are against or, you know, some of them are supportive. However, you know, the, the, the healthcare practitioner, practitioner does not want to, uh, you know, does not want to be with them because he or she are worried to transmit infection. So again, it's, it creates a lot of frustration. It creates a lot of, some of sometimes anger, sometimes problems within the family. Uh, at this point, I am not here to tell you what to do. You have to find a way in order to balance your priorities and find a way to um, um, do something that is acceptable by most family members and try to help them understand your feelings, what you're going through, help them understand your emotions and your thoughts. If you um, verbalize the thoughts and the emotions that you're going through, okay, they will probably be more supportive and understanding. And I cannot tell you, you know what, don't go home, okay, stay in a hotel, this is like, there's, there's no rule here. I think it's each person's preference and each person's comfort level. Um, you know, it's something very personal. I, I or even your colleague cannot tell you, yes, do this or that. Some of them will want to spend time with the family uh, as long as they are, you know, taking uh, all the protective measures and that's fine okay some of them want to isolate themselves and you know stay away however whatever you decide it's very important that you share your thoughts and feeling with the family members uh, it is and tell them i'm not doing this uh, in order to um, you know oh, and I'm, I'm not doing this for you to um, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be away from you. However, there are certain circumstances and there are, I'm having a lot of stress and anxiety about this and that. So most important, keep an open communication and let them understand what you're going through. And whatever you decide, okay, keep communication open. So if you decide to go and stay uh, in an apartment or a hotel by yourself, okay, continue communicating with your family and your loved ones via digital uh, media, video calls, and uh, let them know what's been happening to you, what's happening during the day, so that they, are, they themselves feel, um, you know, feel safe because part of your safety is their safety. And let me put it in a different way. It's not only safety, it's uh, the feeling of security. So if, if they understand what is going during your day, what thoughts are you having, what feelings are you having, they might be somehow more understanding of the things you're going through. Is, is that 
is that good excellent good excellent so uh, to uh, summarize it the key is communication whatever the decision is this yeah, in addition, to that, to, another question. Um, yeah. in addition to that, I wanted to mention, alhamdulillah, we used to live a life with, let's say in the past, it was like the quality of life was 100%. Now it's like 80, 70, 65%. It is okay. The conditions are not normal conditions. It is exceptional. It's going to be for a period of time. It's temporary. It is all okay to live a quality of life that is beyond what we are used to. Just accept that uh, 70, 80 percent is still good enough. Okay, I don't have to have a quality of life of 100 percent. So we just accept the whole world is going through that. It's not only you, everyone. And I really em empathize and sympathize with you, frontline caregivers. Honestly, I'm not seeing anyone, but uh, I know some of you. Uh, probably Dr. Jamil is, is there, I don't know. But honestly, how I, I've been thinking on my own, like we usually uh, watch a lot of movies, right? Like a lot of you watch movies and you see uh, celebrities and you see um, Al Batal, okay? They are doing a lot of rescuing and they are doing like a lot of uh, um, helping, right? But honestly, why watch a movie? This what you are the real heroes this is reality i tell myself you know why put other people in a movie in order to uh, feel their um, greatness no what we are seeing right now is the real greatness honestly you are the heroes i really uh, am very thankful for what you are doing it's not only for me, for me, for my family, for the society. You are doing a great, great job. You are risking yourself. You are risking your, you know, your families. Some of you are, you know, uh, uh, having to stay away from their parents. All this is, is deeply appreciated. And I've, I've seen that also uh, appreciation in, in social media. So despite all this, uh, difficult uh, situation and difficult time it has shown us uh, uh, real people and the, the real heroes really thank you for, so much for all what you've been doing for us thank you Dr. Uh, i have another question here saying uh, what is the best way to uh, stress out or ventilate uh, and uh, lose this frustration that we have without talking to anyone, without putting another person at pressure or making them worried? How can we de-stress um, being alone? Specifically? You see, this is, this is uh, the thing that uh, some, uh, mostly men, I think it's mostly men that go through that, okay? Al-mashā'ir ma hi shay' salbi. Al-mashā'ir ma hi aar. Al-mashā'ir, kul ma inta abbart annaha, whenever you voice your feelings and voice your fears, it is something beneficial for you and for your partner and for others. Instead of saying, I'm putting others under pressure, actually you are putting others under pressure when you are keeping silent and they are seeing you stressed out, you're irritable, angry, and they don't know what's happening. You see, this is pressure versus if you actually tell them your thoughts, your feelings, and let them actually have the opportunity to help you out by discussing things, this will de-stress you and them. So this point is, is actually quite important. And if, if there's someone else that is sick, for example, and you don't want to burden them as, as per what you're saying, talk to your friend. Talk to, I'm sure there are other people that want to hear that. Unfortunately, خاصاً في مجتمعنا العربي, Voicing your feelings and being vulnerable is not so much accepted. However, this is, it is, it is very acceptable that we have feelings and uh, we need to voice them and talk about them. Take it as an opportunity for you to voice your feelings. Try that. If you haven't been doing that in the past, take this situation now and do the opposite talk about it and see how things go they're going to be de-stressing for you and for your family member 
I'm, I'm having some suggestions from uh, some of the yes. participants. They're saying PlayStation, Netflix, reflection journals, all these things can actually um, de-stress uh, some people while they're trying to get away from the real situation. Sure. Why not? Uh, yes. Watch a movie. Um, I have a... Uh, journaling, uh, exercising, uh, writing, and uh, some, some others might, you know, doing cooking, even for men. Some of them like to cook with your family, with your uh, kids. That might distress people a lot. Yes, exactly. Um, I have a great question here. It says, um, what uh, are the suggestions you suggest to improve academic life production during the curfew time? Uh, giving the time uh, give, that this time makes me less energetic and productive compared to uh, COVID-19 era. So what are the yeah. things that we can do as physicians, as clinicians, as academic uh, employees uh, uh -huh. because we realize that most of us are uh, less productive in these uh, mm -hmm. and this time than when we usually are. Um, okay. And some people mm -hmm. are asking, is there a solution very, for this? Very interesting question. So uh, in academic life, there are many, many uh, academic things that you can do, right? Uh, you can either read, write, do um, maybe watch conferences. There are many things. Do what you like do the easiest thing for you do the thing that does not require a lot of energy if you feel i'm not so energetic and for example what i can do is probably um watch a live conference or watch cme hours that's good enough okay again you don't you don't have to feel guilty or and you don't have to be critical of yourself if you are less productive again this is a temporary time it's exceptional okay uh, it is okay to be less productive during this time. Do the things that you think you can do, okay? Sometimes, for example, I'm more productive in the morning. So choose that time for you to read. Or, you know what, I'm not able to read. Then I just listen. Or maybe uh, I can discuss a case, difficult case with my colleague and learn from that. There are many ways where academia can, uh, can be um, put, uh, or you, there are many ways in or, that you can learn and be productive. It doesn't have to be the same way where you are used, like you are used to probably as, uh, one way, choose another way that might be easier for you and does not require a lot of maybe attention and energy. Excellent. So what about uh, like research work, um, reading more data or reading more um, evidence-based stuff regarding COVID-19 or something else? Um, is there like, I mean, are there any suggestions from your side to um, actually how to energize someone to, to do more in these kind of uh, uh, situations? Um, so you, uh, from what I'm understanding is that, um, Shall we do more research on that? Is, is that the question? No, the, uh, like, I mean, most of us are already uh, involved in research work or doing mm -hmm. some kind of lectures for students or something like that. And um, being down in this uh, kind of situation has put all the energy down. And uh, mm -hmm. I've like heard from a lot of people that they've actually stopped what they've been doing before and they're just mm -hmm. in a uh, situation of stasis. They're, they're not really in the mood to do anything anymore. They're not really in the mood to do research. They're not in the mood to do any lectures or like mm -hmm. work on their pending work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, there are ups and downs in life, right? You just have to accept the fact that it is okay that this is a low or, or, or down period. And even if things are on, are in stasis for a specific period of time, uh, it will not last forever. So for example, if your research uh, is uh, gonna be um, on one year, okay, and you uh, are not able to do the work for one or two months, okay, that's, that's not a big deal. Another way is to delegate, or you can, for example, in, uh, in data collection, ask someone to collect for you or ask somebody to do the uh, PubMed search for you. So uh, 
this way you can deal with things differently. Just try to problem solve. Uh, and if you can, you know, wait, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. You know, you can see all the world is on stasis. Everything is on hold. It's not only the research. The economy is on hold. Schools are on hold. Like everything, honestly. Just do what you can do and don't feel guilty. Uh, it's not you. It's the situation. And even if it's you, okay, we are human. There are ups and downs in life. It's, it's not a problem that you are going through a stressful situation and you need to take care of yourself. Okay? Sure. Um, another question, Dr. Patton was talking about the relation uh, between mental stress and physical stress. Um, mm -hmm. uh, some of the participants are saying that um, it's not only that our mood is down, we feel that our immunity is down too. We're fatigued, mm -hmm. we're tired, uh, we have bony pains, joint pains. Um, we, we feel that we have a fever, we feel that we're unwell. So what's the relation really between the fear and frustration and, and the current psychological situation everyone's going yes. through and there's yes. actually physical uh, uh, yes. stress or physical uh, uh, body physical response? Symptoms. Yes, so a lot of people when they worry a lot, they don't sleep well, right? And they don't eat well. A lot of people when they worry a lot, they might also have a low mood and uh, their energy goes down and uh, they start having headaches, uh, body aches, and sometimes upset GI, um, you know, irritable bowels sometimes. So it is very common for people that are not, uh, that, that, that have mental difficulties. All of us are going through that. Like, you know, we are fearful, we are anxious. It is normal to um, sometimes have body symptoms that are um, related to the uh, mental stress. But how can we deal with that? Again, uh, the, there are behaviors related to our thoughts and feelings and behaviors that are related to our daily activities that will help us de-stress and re-energize ourselves. Sleep well, exercise, take breaks, and ha to have healthy meals major, major things in your life that need to be uh, done properly, specifically during this time, that will help you reduce all uh, those uh, st stressors and those bodily aches. Have more breaks. If you feel, you know what, I'm tired, I need to take more breaks, I need to sleep more, that's okay. This is a very stressful situation. So be compassionate with yourself. Don't be very critical on yourself. Yes, all of us are going through this change. Accept those emotions, accept the physical pain you're having. Don't tell yourself, why am I going through this? I don't want this. No, accept it and be compassionate with yourself. Okay? Excellent, excellent. Um, one more question was talking about dealing with patients. Now they're saying, um, how can we face patients uh, or families uh, with a patient who was exposed and then uh, died of COVID-19? And before mm -hmm. we deal with the family, how can we deal with ourselves first before uh, contacting the family? So um, what I'm understanding is that, you know, they have been um, providing care for a patient who was infected and then the patient passed away. Is that the case? Yes, yes. Okay, so the first thing that probably would come to your mind is, so this, I've seen that patient and he passed away, so I might as well have this, um, have, have this pathway. Is that, is that what might be going into your, you, you see, you have to explore what thoughts are you having. You see what I mean? Who asked the question? Okay, may I ask him or her, to um, you know, maybe verbalize what are the thoughts that he or she were having when they dealt with such patient? Okay, um, I'm not quite sure if we can get a, a voice, but we'll try to get that. 
Okay. Um, you know, it so would be very what, interesting to know what thoughts they were having. Were they worried about them getting infected or them, um, for example, la samahalla, passing away uh, similarly to the, similar to what happened to the patient? Again, it's still a thought. This thought is probably not the truth. You see, it happened to that patient. This does not mean that this is going to happen to me. Facts, 80% of patients that are infected with COVID-19 recover. 15%, they need further care. And only 5% really um, re require ICU. So you need to challenge your thoughts in order to reduce anxiety. You, you see what I'm, um, where I'm coming from? Excellent, yes. But the question is, there, the question is, how can you face the family? How can you break the bad news to the family? And okay. that situation is very difficult, you know, because it's something new that really probably mm -hmm. people don't understand about and medical practitioners don't really understand. It's mm -hmm. not like a disease or something that has been there for a long time and you can explain. Um, yes. So yes. it's probably so, a little bit difficult to break this bad news to the family. Mm -hmm. So this goes to uh, breaking bad news and how to do it. So basically, uh, when this happens to any patient, you probably um, need to first of all, review all uh, what have been done for the patient. And um, after that, you know, sit down with the family, um, be ready to answer many questions, uh, be ready that they will grieve they will be probably crying in front of you. Uh, some of them might have a collapse. Just be ready for that. It's very hard. However, um, however, it is a new situation. There are, you know, risks. There are uh, risks to that uh, uh, new illness. Um, you have to probably be very compassionate with the family and help them understand that you know, the uh, healthcare practitioners have done all what they can do in order to help uh, in, in, like in the end, God will choose the best for each person, whether it is, you know, staying in this life or leaving this life. Uh, you know, you, you, we don't know what is really best for us. But if, if, uh, if God chose that, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing it's, it's kind of out of your control and you have to be very compassionate with the family and understand that they will grieve. Excellent. Um, uh, I have another question talking about uh, teamwork. They're saying that um, usually the, sometimes they realize that their teams get frustrated and their teams are angry and they're not even uh, dealing with each other and the clinical practice as appropriate team members. Um, mm -hmm. So how can uh, the uh, frustration and restlessness and fear affect mm -hmm. the teamwork in, in these situations? This is a very good question. Um, again, being empathic, empathy is al-muwajada uh, bil Arabi, and this is a skill that can be learned. It is putting yourself in uh, another person's shoes and having and trying to think his own way of thinking and feeling his own feelings. So being empathic with your colleague and trying to understand what they're going through is, is key here. In addition to that, um, there's, a, especially among colleagues, there should be regular meetings done by supervisors or by uh, the manager. Uh, in order for others to voice their feelings, uh, you have to create this environment uh, that will help them be vulnerable and accept their vulnerability and each one's frustration. You know, you, you can have them a meeting or maybe once every two or three days. Uh, each one voices their own thoughts, concerns, maybe an experience they've gone through. Uh, you know, I'm afraid, I'm worried about this and that, this will really reduce the stress. So I really encourage supervisors and managers to have regular meetings for all the staff in order for them to understand what each one is going through and be more compassionate with each other. 
Excellent. Um, one other issue that happens in, in clinical practice is that um, uh, people are in fear of the uh, cleanness and sterilization of the area. So I got a question that said, uh, if I'm not an OCD, but I have a trait of OCD, how can I surrender? Uh, how can I not surrender to my OCD thoughts in cleaning and sterilization? Um, this is a bit difficult. Like when you say OCD cleaning habit, like what are you or you know other colleagues are doing? It depends, right? Yes. It depends. So, for example, I will be honest with you. I like to carry the isopropyl alcohol with me. Okay. And whenever I touch something, I use it afterwards. And I don't think this is OCD. Uh, when I go back home, I don't do that. I just, you know, wash my hand once. But because of this exceptional situation, I'm doing that. For example, if I'm doing a lecture somewhere or I touch the uh, elevator buttons, okay, I like to use my isopropyl alcohol because it, it kills germs. So I wouldn't say this is OCD at this point, but um, it's like, you know, extra care, extra protection. And you are actually asked to wash your hands frequently. Excellent. Um, so I have a last question here that we'll probably end with this session. Um, there's a question that says, uh, is there any kind of discussion or plan uh, that has been put uh, at a national level from the psychiatry or psychology uh, departments in the uh, country to support the healthcare providers who are ongoing uh, COVID treatment and are the first liners in, in COVID management, uh, mm -hmm. especially like emergency ICU and anesthesia physicians? Yes, there, ha there has been uh, a platform called uh, Daim, okay, Minasa Daim, where any healthcare provider that has been facing uh, like psychological difficulty or even like questions where they can reach out and uh, talk to uh, mental health care workers and psychiatrists that are available 24 hours and I've, I've been hearing very positive uh, you know very positive talks about uh, this uh, platform in addition to that for example in in my institute where i work uh, Mustashfa Malik Abdelaziz, King Abdelaziz University Hospital, the uh, psychiatry unit have be, have put uh, uh, have have put uh, like a, a plan for healthcare uh, workers, um, like a, a specific pathway for them, and uh, it's be, it's going to be implemented uh, by next week, inshallah. So I, I'm sure, like uh, maybe at an institute level. And an, a national level is uh, what I know about is uh, Daim. Excellent. Actually, we've, we've heard of Daim and Mujah Min Nahiyat Khasat Sahih It was a good initiative and they had a lot of lectures going on. Uh, the question is is there like a one to one session like where a healthcare provider can seek um, uh, psychological support or just vent out to uh, mm -hmm. a psychologist or a psychiatrist and like a one to one session? Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, like in, in, in open sessions or open lectures, it's very difficult for a person to actually express his mm -hmm. feelings or to mm -hmm. talk about like what his fears are and what his, uh, what's like scaring him. Mm -hmm. So is there something yeah. uh, like... Well, my understanding is that, uh, my understanding is that Daim provides that. Th this is Excellent. my understanding. Yeah, Daim provides one-to-one -one if needed. And you can ask uh, on an institutional level if they were providing that. Like in my institution, we are providing that for severe cases. However, we are encouraging uh, talking to colleagues and then if, if that's not helpful, talking to supervisors. And then, so it's like a, a level hierarchy because some of them only venting would be just enough. So it exactly. depends on yes, each, right. yes, in, on each case. Exactly. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Fatin. Um, thank you, it's you my pleasure. Do you have to add? Uh, it's, it's our pleasure. pleasure. Uh, it's our pleasure and we uh, appreciate very much uh, your participating with us in uh, SASIM's first webinar uh, on line and this COVID uh, outbreak. Um, Dr. Jameel Abu Daini, Wassalk Salam.
اسم جمعيه السعوديه للتخصصات جمعيه السعوديه لطب الطوارئ uh, we are honored for you to be our first guest in these webinars and you will receive your certificate ان شاء الله through your email خلال الايام الجايه thank you الله يعطيك ما قصرتي الف شكر لك صراحه ما ما قصرتي السيشن جدا رائع و ما نبي قطع ماني سامعه ماني سامعه دكتوره قطع الخط شكرا لك Hello. دكتوره فاتن على السيشن و ريلي اونورد انك كنتي اول جست ات واز ريلي ماتش نيدد سعد صدرك واجابتك على اسئله الحضور ثانك يو فيري ماتش للحضور يسعدني يسعدني دكتوره يسعدني وشكرا لكم شكرا للحضور وشكرا شكرا لكم لاتاحه الفرصه لي عشان اقدر اني اساعد باي طريقه اقدر اساعد فيها والله يديكم الف عافيه انتم الابطال الحقيقيين فعلا اي ام براود اوف يو الله يسعدك يعطيك العافيه بارك الله فيك ما قصرتي شكرا لوقتك الله يخليكم مع السلامه مع السلامه مع السلامه